Hey, welcome back to Everyday Economics, the podcast that helps you learn about the economic world happening around you every day. I'm your host, Chris Krug, president of the 501c3 nonprofit, nonpartisan Franklin News Foundation. Everyday Economics is a production of America's Talking Network. We are recording today's episode on Thursday, June 22nd. And joining me, as always, is Dr. Orfe Devangi, PhD economist. We're going to look at the PCE price index. That's the Personal Consumption Expenditures Price Index. Uh, That report is coming out on, I believe, the 30th of June. Report is going to come out on Friday. Let's talk about it. PCE has uh, bounced around a little bit. Change from a month one year ago in April was 4.4%. First of all, let's just very quickly go back and explain what the PCE measures. And let's talk about why it's important. And then let's get your forecast on where you think it's going to come in for May 2023. Yeah, look, the PCE price index is a measure of the prices that people living in the United States pay for goods or services. That's it. And so it's going to reflect consumer expenses, but also like changes in consumer behavior. So like, you know, if prices of something have gone up and I want to substitute to something else, right? So it's going to be reflected in the PCE. But yeah, going forward, I think we are probably going to have some good news in terms of the PCE headline numbers. They're likely going to keep coming down. You know, we had some really good news on the, on the consumer price index numbers this month from last month, right? Core PCE remains somewhat elevated. We saw that last month. We'll continue to see that core inflation is elevated. Part of what's going on is that you basically have a, the, a an easing of supply chain issues, s- supply chain pressures, which is causing prices to decline. Right. And we're across industry. I mean, we're seeing manufacturing prices. You look at the ISM manufacturing price index down, falling services, finally cooling. So supply chains easing for sure. You look at transportation costs and freight prices falling, but you still have a lot of demand driven inflation, right? You have a, you have a lot of demand driven. Let's explain that. What would be an example at this point of demand driven inflation? Well, it, yeah. Well, I mean, if you think about the fact that homeowners in this country are sitting on record home equity and that they can take some of that equity to consolidate credit cards and, and continue to go on vacations and, uh, you know, in hotels, right? And continue to spend because they are comfortable. Right, they're still in a very, very comfortable financial condition, financial shape, and you have a strong labor market with, by the way, real wage growth improving. Right, we have inflation coming down. You know, you have inflation headline inflation coming down, and you have nominal wage growth barely coming down. I mean, if you look, if you compare where we were a year ago to where we are today, inflation has come down substantially. But nominal wage growth has not come down a whole lot. And so you have, you know, you have this kind of improvement in purchasing power over that time period that's causing people to continue to shop, right? And we're seeing it in, we're seeing it in, the, in, the, in a lot of the discretionary spending that's still out there. And so that's still kind of counteracting the impact that easing supply chains have on prices. And so and so that's going to be a, a factor. Also you have housing. While market rents have come down substantially, you still have uh you still have pressures on the housing side, you know, prices are still very slow to adjust, you know, the rent prices are still very slow to adjust, especially when you think about how they're measured in these government indexes. And so those factors are going to keep core uh, inflation elevated in the next report. And, and also, finally, I think there's one more one more factor that I forgot to mention that's really important is that financial conditions, which Fed Chair Powell kind of like waiting on to cool the U.S. economy. Well, financial conditions haven't tightened. They've actually eased since uh, since the you know since the bank turmoil, right? And 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 they're actually looser today than they were 
last year. You know, they're easing, easing back to a level not seen since about April 2022. And so that, you know, all of those factors are likely to allow consumers to have that breathing room, right? And, uh, and so, you're, you know, so unfortunately, demand is not going to cool as fast as the Fed might have hoped, you know, and so and, and, and I think the Fed knows that. Right. So we, we, they came out and said Powell came out and said, look, we're going to raise two more times this year. Right. And we're going to hike rates two more times this year. They had telegraphed. I mean, when they when they said they were going to pause. For sure. And they're very well aware of e- easing financial conditions. They're where they're very well aware of all the, uh, the 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 fact that core is still so much higher, core inflation is still so much higher than the than the, than where they they need to be, and so uh, so yeah, you know, two more hikes is is likely the scenario that's going to play out this year, you know, and it, with all that, you know, this inflation is still very much underway, but but there is some resistance. You want to take a wild guess at uh, at, at what the PC number will come in at for May? And we'll call it good right there. Yeah, I, I, I don't know where it's going to be. I think maybe, maybe over the month. To be fair, the number has gone from five point four percent in in January to four point four percent in April. I think PCE. I think core is probably going to stay stuck where it's at at four point seven percent year over year, and headline PCE might tick down. You know, year over year might tick down to. You know, the low 4%, you know, maybe 4%, 4.1%. So that's kind of where I think we're going, we're headed. And again, I could be completely wrong. We'll see. Subscribe to Everyday Economics and dozens of other high quality podcasts at americastalking.com. 